of all the schools signed on. Let's check and see. Octorero, are you back with us again? Okay. Kentucky School for the Deaf, are you with us today? Yeah. Hi. Cornell Elementary, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Muhlenberg Cole, are you here? Yeah. And Fernbrook Elementary, are you there? Fernbrook? Okay, I think we're going to get started, and hopefully the other schools will join us as we go. So, good morning. My name is Helen Kirschbaum, and I'm the Education Director of the Goodwin Holocaust Museum and Education Center, and we're located in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. We're the only Holocaust Museum in New Jersey, and we're happy to be joining you this morning to celebrate Dr. Seuss's birthday. With me this morning is Dr. Paul Winkler, the Executive Director of the New Jersey Commission on Holocaust Education. The Goodwin Holocaust Museum is proud to be partnering with the Commission and MAGPI as we begin today's conversations about accepting differences. Before we begin, I want to remind you that MAGPIE is recording today's program and also ask that each school first introduce yourself. Tell us where you're located, who's with you in the classroom, what grade level is there, and also let me remind you to keep your microphones on mute when you are not speaking. So, um, Octorera, are you there? Octorera. Okay, Kentucky School for the Deaf, can you introduce yourself, please? Okay, here's we go. Hi, we are Kentucky School for the Deaf. We're from Danville, Kentucky. Our entire fourth and fifth grade class is here. Thank you so much. We're happy to have you with us today. Cornell Elementary, can you introduce yourselves? Tell us where you're from and who's there with you today. Thank you so much. And Muhlenberg Cole, are you with us? And can you introduce yourself? Good morning. We are the Muhlenberg Elementary students in second, third, and fourth grade. And we are located in Reading, Pennsylvania. Thanks for having us. Thank you for being with us today. Fernbrook, did you end up signing on? Um, Fern. Fernbrook, are you with us? Not today. Okay, we're straight out. No. Please. Okay, again, She's please let me remind you that you need chair. to mute your mics if you are not the one speaking. So, Thank you for joining us, and Dr. Winkler is going to start off our program. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so excited to be here today to read about uh, Dr. Seuss's, some of Dr. Seuss's books, and one of my favorites we're going to start with. But I wanted to tell you first why I really like reading about Dr. Seuss. As much as he makes me laugh at the pictures that he draws and the words that he writes, I'm really excited about Dr. Seuss because even when he was very young, 
and he started out as a writer, and he started out drawing pictures, he always felt that you could learn something, and he wanted to teach lessons through his writings, not just to have fun, but also to learn something. And he always felt that bullying and being mean wasn't the right thing to do. So a lot of his writings, a lot of his stories, talk about lessons that we can learn. So boys and girls, when we start this first one, which is my favorite, Sneetches, I want you not only to enjoy it, listen to the words, see the pictures, but I want you to think about what was Dr. Seuss trying to teach us? What lessons should we learn from listening to Dr. Seuss? So let's get started with our good favorite, my favorite, The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. Now the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain belly sneeches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think that such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag. We're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with those plain belly sort. And whenever they met someone when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play, could a plain belly sneech get in the game? Not at all. You could only play if your belly had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roast or picnics or parties or marshmallow toast, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out of cold in the dark on the beaches. They kept them away. Never let them come near. And that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean. I'll bet some of you remember him from reading this. His name is Sylvester, can you all say it? Sylvester McMonkey McBean. You can help me when we say his name. If you want to say it, you can say it. And I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy. But I can fix that. I'm the fix-up chappy. I've come here to help you, and I have what you need. And my prices are low, and I work at great speed. And my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey... Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like the star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside and the big machine roared. And it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burst and it popped them out. But the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars.
stars upon the heart. So, Octaria Elementary, does that end the story? Everybody has stars now, so I guess the story's over. Octaria, someone want to answer from there? Do you think the story's over? No. How, how about Kentucky school? Is the story over? No. No, sorry. And you're right. Dr. Seuss knew something. It wasn't good enough now for those sneeches that had stars at first. Let's see what happens. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at first. We're still the best sneeches and they are the worst. But now how in the world will you we know, they all frowned, if which kind is what, or the other way round? Boy, they're in a real pickle. They all have stars now, and they all think they're the best. But then came Sylvester McMonkey McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, Things are not quite as bad as you think, so you don't know who's who. That is perfectly true. But come with me, my friends. You know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on the beaches, and all it'll cost you is ten dollars each. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars, so you won't look like sneeches who have them on the R's. And that handy machine working very precisely removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. In again, out again. Then with snoots in the air they paraded about and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got awful frightfully mad. To be wearing a star was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McBean invited them in to his star-off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you can probably guess, things really got in to a horrible mess. And the rest of the day, on those wild, screaming beaches, the fix-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches, off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machine they raced round and about, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one or that one or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. What a mess. Then when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-up chappy Sylvester McMonkey McBean packed up and he went, and he laughed, ha, 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 as he drove in his car up the beach, they never will learn. You can't teach a sneech. Oh, what a sad ending. I wish Dr. Seuss didn't do that to us. How about the Muhlenberg Elementary? You th Muhlenberg Intermediate. You think that's the end? No. No. Positively, <laughs> no. Good for you. How about Cornell? You think that's the end of it? No! All right, Cornell. I'd like 
the teacher from Cornell pick two two young people to stand up for us. Can the other schools see mm -hmm. them? Yeah. Cornell teacher, can you pick two students, one that has a star now and one that had a star before? Can you pick two teachers? Two kids. Two kids. Cornell teacher? All right, how about Akhtara, Akhtarara? Can you pick two, two students? Let's see what Dr. Seuss had in mind. No? Oh. And your question again was, can you repeat your question? Da, d, uh, from Akhtarara. Is that my talking to Akhtarara? No, I think that's cool. Yes, you are. Oh, okay. Could you pick two students who will act for me, one being a snitch that has star now and one that had a star before? Two okay. students. Okay. Just ask them to come up okay. to the front or so we can see them. Okay, right there. Can they see you right there? Okay, we have two students okay, right there. Okay, there they are. Can you say your names? All right. What are your names, students? Lily and Kennedy. Now, you said the story doesn't end. How do you think Dr. Seuss ended it? You want to show us how you think Dr. Seuss ended this story? What do you think they're doing? They do to each other. Do they walk away from each other? Do they not invite each other? What do you think they do? That they all be friends. All right, how do you show us that you're friends? What do you do? Show us something. Good! Let's hear it for them. All right, thank you. So let's turn and see what Dr. Seuss said. But McBean was quite wrong, I'm quite happy to say, that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had them, one or not, upon ours. So now I ask you boys and girls, and I'm going to ask the different schools, can someone from the Kentucky School for the Deaf is there someone that could, teacher, could someone tell us, what do we learn from this story that Dr. Seuss tells us about Sneetches and the stars? Kentucky School, can you pick on, ask someone to tell us? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Talking about hate and leaving people out and then becoming friends, but really it being silly because they were the same to begin with and it didn't matter whether they had a star or not. That is a wonderful answer. Thank you. How about from Cornell? Could someone from Cornell tell us what we learned from this? That is, that is a wonderful answer. That is perfect. How about Muhlenberg? Could Muhlenberg tell us? Just stand up where you are. Um, that you need to respect each and every one. And it doesn't matter if you have stars or if you have plain bellies. You just need to be friends. Very, very good. And you know, boys and girls, not many people walk around with stars on their bellies. But there are people that have a different color skin. People have different religions. People look different. People live sometimes in different homes. Some people have clothes that maybe aren't like someone else's. 
So don't pick on people and don't make other people feel bad because they're different. Not everyone has a star. Some people have a lot of hair on their head and some people have a little bit like me. I wouldn't want someone to pick on that. Some people may have red hair and brown hair and blonde, but it shouldn't make a difference. But if someone is mean, then they are the bad person, the individual. But don't judge the person just by how they look and what they wear or what religion or the color of their skin. You guys really learned this lesson. Thank you. And we're going to read another one now that also tells a story for us. Thank you, boys and girls, for that. Yeah, before we start the other book, did I see some kids at Octorera wearing Dr. Seuss hats this morning? Are you guys dressed for the birthday party? Uh, yeah, yes. 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 You are. And, and this is Dr. Winkler. I didn't dress for the party, but I'm going to show you the tie that I wore for the party. <laughs> Can you see my tie? Yes. yes. Well, so, kind of. Yes, we can see it. Kind of. It has Daffy Duck and Buzz Bugs Bunny and who else is on there? Oh. Tweety Bird. I purposely picked that tie out today. Now, this book is a very interesting one. When someone is mean and they pick on someone, what do we call them? What word do we call them? Uh, Cornell Elementary, what word do we call those people? Right. And, and Muhlenberg, bully. Why? So we're going to read a book about bullies, but it's a very, very fun book. It's called Billy, the Badly Behaving Bully Goat. And you see how badly is spelled with three A's in there, so badly, like a goat speaks, by Stacy Schwartz. Well, Landisville... Welcome, Landisville. Good morning. We were just starting to read a book. We just read Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. And now we're going to read Billy, the Badly Behaving Bully Goat. And remember, boys and girls, what I told you. I'm not just reading them just to laugh and have fun and enjoy books. But what lessons? So I'm going to ask you again after this one, what lessons do we learn? Now, during this story, there may be a bell ring for the classes because we're in a high school today. And if we do, we'll just stop for a minute and let the bell ring. And I know you'll be able to be cooperative. Once there lived a little goat, and Billy was his name. He never played with other goats, but Billy was to blame. The reason for his loneliness, the goats had had enough. Young Billy was a bully goat who acted, who always acted tough. A bully in the playground, in the neighborhood, a bully in the park a bully in the morning, and a bully after dark. A bully on the playground, and a bully on the bus. Wherever Billy went, he caused a bully ruckus fuss. Whoa. 
His school behavior was the worst, the bulliest of all. The younger goats would not know, go near his cubby in the hall. Now, before we read any more, uh, Landisville, let me ask you, what type of writing is this? What do we call this when words sound rhyming together? What, is that? what kind of writing is this? If a teacher would call on someone? Andrew. Rhyming words. Rhyming, and we call it a? Poetry we, book. Poetry. It's not a poetry book, but it's written in poem form. And you listen to it. This person wrote it as a poem in this book. A bully on the playground, a bully on the bus. Wherever Billy went, he called a bully ruckus fuss. His school behavior was the worst, the bulliest of all. The younger, younger goats would not know, go near his cubby in the hall. He called goat names, he made them cry, he even pulled their hair. He threw their books and took their things, their homework he would tear. He picked on goats at recess. And instead of eating lunch, he'd skip his meal and search for kids to tease and push and punch. His teachers told the principal our rules he won't obey. A timeout chair placed in the hall was where they made him stay. The punishments he got would not upset him in the least. His parents became desperate and his bully pranks increased. I just don't know what we should do, his father did exclaim. With several weeks of sleepless nights, the answer finally came. The wise old goat upon the hill, the answer to our plight. We'll take our son to see him. We must leave tonight. Boy, they were upset. The wise old goat lived in cave in a cave on Goat Town Hall Peak. All goats with problems went to him when answers they did seek. His hair was gray, his eyes were blue, fine wrinkles creased his nose. His shaggy beard had grown so long it touched his hoof-like toes. He was patient, fair, and kind, plus he had exper expertise in thought. He'd correct bad situations with the lessons that he taught. Each problem was a challenge, though none were really tragic. Most were solved with counseling. For some, he used goat magic. 137 Tallest Peak, Wise Old Owl, Old Goat, Ph.D., Goat, Ph.D., Certified Goat Therapist. Specialized training in when to butt and when to butt in a major goat credit card. All major goat, goat credit cards accepted. The goats arrived at dawn, dawn, the first appointment of the day, and they left their little bully in the waiting room to play. They told the wise old goat about the problems with their son how he bullied other goats since the tender age of one. There were notes from instructors, detentions by the score, and calls from angry parents. They couldn't take much more. The wise old goat sat very still. He did not even blink. He stroked his beard and nodded once. He gave them both a wink. This goat needs help. He is not bad, although he seems quite rude. My magic dust is just the thing to change his attitude. To teach someone about respect is teaching at its best. He grabbed a pen and paper. Here is what I suggest. To help him change his bully ways so he can start to heal, he needs to see how what he does makes other goats feel. A bully for my billy goat? 
his mom cried through her tissue, to bully, said the wise old goat, will not resolve this issue. Two bullies won't resolve the issue. The next time Billy bullies, magic dust will change the tide. So he will feel exactly how his victims feel inside. And then, dear parents, you will see a cycle like a wheel. The worse he acts toward other goats, the worse that he will feel. The last part of the plan before his lesson is complete, he needs to feel how goats, how goat kids feel when how he acts is sweet. It's these warm and fuzzy feelings Billy will not wish to lose. Respect and sensitivity are traits that he will choose. This all makes sense, said Mr. Goat, and Mrs. Goat agreed. With all our love and strong support, success is guaranteed. Exactly, said the wise old goat. I'm glad I have your trust. Now all I need is a secret way to use my magic dust. Does Billy have a favorite toy with which he likes to play? Is there a piece of clothing that he wears to school each day? Mr. Goat then scratched his ear and gave a little cough. His cap, he cried, his baseball cap, he never takes it off. Mrs. Goat board brought Billy in. He shuffled to a chair. He crossed his arms. He rolled his eyes as if he didn't care. Well, mist your hat with magic dust, no reason to be tense. Then all you say and all you do will have a consequence. The magic dust won't hurt your hat. At first it may feel tight, but please don't try to take it off until you sleep at night. Whatever Billy did reply, glancing at his father, a dust fell on his cap. He thought of new kids. He could bother. The next day Billy packed his lunch, dried grasses mixed with rice, his mom then kissed his cheek and said, Dear, please try to be nice. He trotted quickly down the street, his cap upon his head. He seemed he had forgotten the, what the wise old goat had said. He saw a girl goat from his class. Gardenia was her name. She wore a pair of glasses with a bulky purple frame. First Billy made her drop her books. He gave her tail a tug, and with angry glare, an angry glare, he said, Your face looks like a bug. His lips began to form a sneer. It did not last for long. Then in a flash, he figured out that something had gone wrong. Billy stood there, straight and tall, hooves firmly on his hips. The moment that those words came out, his inside did some flips. He felt a little queasy, and his heart began to pound. His head felt strange and dizzy, and his voice could not be found. Gardenia's face looked hurt and sad. A tear was in her eye. She stared at him. He stared at her. They both began to cry. He ran and hid behind a tree. His thoughts were all still reeling. He'd have to pick on someone else to lose this dreadful feeling. A gentle goat named Godfrey was the victim Billy chose. Tiny freckles marked the skin across his cheek and nose. Whenever, when Billy looked at Godfrey's face, he pointed with a grin. Just look at all those silly spots. You're like a leopard skin. Billy stood there, straight and tall, hooves firmly on his hips. The moment that those words came out, his insides did some flips. He felt a little queasy, and his heart began to pound. His head felt strange and dizzy, and his voice could not be found. Godfrey's lips were quivering, and Billy's skin grew pale. 
and they stood there face to face. They both began to wail. But Billy then remembered words the wise old goat had said. He grabbed his hat frantically. It stuck there on his head. The other goats were shocked and stunned. They watched him dance around. Billy wiped his tear-stained cheeks and left without a sound. He tried more pranks for several days, but each one was a flop. His insides just felt worse and worse. He had to make them stop. What can I do, he begged his mom, so I won't feel so bad. Try being nice. Try being nice, his mom advised. Respectful, respectful, said his dad. Be nice to goats, but how, he thought. He had no plan at all. He'd been a bully all his life at least since he could crawl. So when a goat named Gwen fell down and landed with a yelp, instead of making fun of her, now Billy tried to help. His insides felt much better. His heart felt rather light. He even heard his mouth call out, Hey, Gwen, are you all right? Gwen looked with great surprise as the goat circled round. Then Billy Stop. Then Billy stopped to gather books and pencils from the ground. The other kids all held their breath. Would poor Gwen be attacked? But Billy handed Gwen her things. Her books were steep, neatly stacked. Whoa, Billy sure is acting strange. Did Billy bonk his head? Should someone call the principal? Should Billy be in bed? He seems so di- very different from the goats he was goat he was before. Can it be true that Billy's not a bully anymore? From that day on, he stopped all pranks, and Billy learned to be a friend. His character was new. No picking fights, no pulling hair, no nasty bully tricks, no calling names, no teasing kids. No punches, bumps, or kicks. He learned to share with other goats. He learned to wait his turn. He found out that he liked to smile instead of looking stern. So thankful were his his parents to the wise old goat they wrote. With magic dust our sons become a thoughtful, gentle goat. He has new friends. He loves his school. We're so pleased we could clap. But could you tell us what to do when he outgrows his cap? The wise old goat called Billy's folks and told them not to worry. Though magic dust works very well, it wears off in a hurry. Your son's new actions are his own. The change is from his heart. The magic dust just gave the push for him to start. Now Billy uses careful thoughts and feelings as his guide. He knows his actions actions can affect other goats inside. So good for you. You should be proud of everything you did. Congratulations. You now have a well-adjusted kid. Thanks so much, said Mrs. Goat, through sobs and joyful tears. They lived with peace and happiness for many, many more goat years. Now the bell may ring in a moment or two, so you can think about these questions. The first question is, do you think think there's such a thing as magic powder dust that could change the person let me ask Octoria school Octorora school Octorora can you pick someone from your school there teacher a student who can tell us is there such a thing as magic dust 
said I could oh, go where I said Layla. Go ahead, Layla. Well, is there such thing as magic dust? No. No. Boy, I'm glad you said it that way, too. It has to come from where? Every bone to point where change has to come from. Does it come from magic dust? Or does it come yeah, from inside yeah. you? Inside, inside, right? Everyone should be pointing right there inside. How about Kentucky school? Do you think there's magic dust? No. Absolutely no. And Cornell and Muhlenberg and Fernbrook and Lansdale, is there magic dust? No. Thank you. You are all right. It comes from inside. And if we have bully becomes a better person, we're going to have less people being bullied. What a wonderful world we'll have. Less bullies, more better people. But you know, boys and girls, I have to tell you something a little sad. There are still bullies out there. They're not bully goats. There are bully people. What can you do if someone is a bully? What is it that you can do if someone's being a bully? Could could Lansdale, Lands, Landisville student tell us, could a Landisville student tell us, what could you do if someone's being a bully? Ethan, stand up. You can tell a teacher about them or just walk away. Walk away, tell a teacher. How about Muhlenberg? Could you tell us and something else that you might do? Um, you could tell your school principal. You could tell your parents. Definitely, you have very good friends and people that will help you principal, your teachers, your staff at the school, you tell Parents. people, guidance counselors to help you when you have a problem. Is there anything else? There's some other things you might do also. How about Cornell Elementary? Somebody from Cornell? That's very good. You could say, you could say, that's very nice. You're making someone feel bad. And maybe they would stop. If they don't, you then tell someone. But maybe they will stop. How about Kentucky school? Anything else from Kentucky school? Does Kentucky school have something that they could tell us? Yes. Uh, if they keep picking on you a whole lot, then you can tell someone you know. Good. Thank you. That's excellent. And Octorara, anything else? Just ignore them. Just ignore them. Just, okay. Go. You could also, when these things happen, I like to think of people being called heroes, a hero, an upstander, someone who will make a difference. You never know. Just by telling a teacher or a parent, you might be that person. How many people here are going to be upstanders and do the right thing and a good thing? Raise your hands. Raise your hand if you're going to be a good person and not be a bully. Oh, that is so, so good. I was so glad today, boys and girls, to read some stories to you. Just remember, whenever you read stories, a lot of them, while they may be fun, they may be sad, they may make you even cry a little, they always teach something. So think about stories when you read them. What lesson, especially 
Dr. Seuss. Helen? We also brought some other books with us that we really like and that we think teach you some of these same good lessons. And if you haven't read them, we hope that you'll find them in your library or borrow them from a friend because they're really good stories. The first one we brought is called The New Neighbors, and it's one of the Berenstein Bears books. And this one is called The New Bear on the Block. It was written by Dr. Stacy Schwartz, and she's the same author who wrote Billy the Badly Behaving Bully Goat. And both of these books, both um, The New Neighbors and The New Bear on the Block, talk about how people feel when they're new to a neighborhood or new to your school or even new to your classroom. And some of the things that you can do to make someone feel welcome and not let them feel like they're standing out and alone when they come to your school. Another one of our favorite authors is Patricia Polacco. And just like Dr. Seuss, her stories are really entertaining and really fun to read, but they all teach you a really special lesson. And one of the books that we liked is Mr. Lincoln's Way, and Patricia Polacco's newest book is called Bully. And it talks to you about some of the things that bullies do and some of the things that you can do to make sure that you respond the right way when a bully is around you or around your friends. Because you want to make sure that that doesn't happen in your school. You want to make sure that you can help stop bullying. Um, this book is called Teammates, and it's written by Peter Golenbach. And it's a really wonderful story about Jackie Robinson. For those of you who don't know Jackie Robinson and Pee Wee Reese, Jackie Robinson was the first black man in Major League Baseball. And he wasn't really that well accepted when he started in the Major Leagues. And Pee Wee Reese was one of his teammates who helped him to become more accepted. And so I think it'll give you ideas on how to help your friends feel more accepted if they have people who are picking on them because you need their friends to stand up for them and be upstanders so that they don't continue to be picked on. This book that I brought for you today is called Blue Lou and the Bully Fish. And it's a really fun story. It actually even comes with a CD with music in it. And it's a story, again, of one fish whose friend is not being accepted into the group. And what this friend did to help his friend become accepted and have the group accept his friend so that everyone can learn to play together and work together in the classroom and even outside of the classroom. This book that I have here is called Rhinos and Raspberries. It's a great collection of short stories and poetry, all dealing with lessons of tolerance and acceptance of people from different areas, different worlds, different countries. Um, this book is actually put out by um, the Southern Poverty Law Center and for teachers who are with us today, if you go to their website, which is tolerance.org, this book is available for you for, classroom, for your classrooms at no charge. Um, it's a great collection, and they do have a lot of wonderful resources on that website. So we recommend it very highly. This is another one of my favorites. It's called The Colors of Us 
don't know. It's a really big book, so I don't know how well you can see it. But it's a great way to start conversations about differences in people, but how we're all the same. Even though the color of our skin or the color of our hands or the color of our hair may be different, inside we're all the same. And we all needed to be treated the way we would like to be treated. Um, another book that we forgot to bring with us, but that we really recommend, is called The Terrible Things by Eve Bunting. And she is a wonderful author. It's a book that can be used at almost every grade level. And it's an allegory, and I think that you'll find it really enjoyable for, your stu for everyone to read. So um, we hope that you try some of the books that we've suggested today and that you enjoyed the books that Dr. Winkler shared with you. We'd like to thank you for joining us. I'm going to ask each of you to um, say anything that you'd like to say as you sign off. And if you have a favorite book that your class likes to read, feel free to share that with us so that the other schools can hear it. So, or hear what it's called. So, Octorera, we hope that you've learned lots of good lessons today. Do you have anything to say as you sign off? Um, uh oh, did. There we go. We like, we like, we like the fill bucket. The fill bucket. Say it again louder. We like we the fill like bucket. Fill the bucket? Is that what it's called? Fill the bucket? Yes. Okay, we're going to look for that one. Thank you for suggesting it to us, and thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Have a good day. Thank Kentucky. you. Thank you. Kentucky School, do you have a book that your students would like to suggest to us, and do you have anything to say as you sign off? Um, yes, give us just a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the bear book, uh, the Bernstein Bears books are really good. All of them. <laughs> okay. okay, so we're glad we found one of your favorites. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye. Bye. We hope you learned lots of good lessons. Cornell, are you with us? Do you have a good book for us yeah. to read? Yeah. Say it louder. Green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham. Another one of Dr. Seuss's good ones. Okay. Thank you for joining us and thank you for wearing your special Dr. Seuss hat today. And Muhlenberg, we're ready for you to say goodbye and tell us a good book. Thank you. Uh, we uh, have our high five rule at our school at Muhlenberg that helps us be kind and caring to all of our friends at school. And uh, we enjoy all of Dr. Seuss's books uh, that we... They're really funny. They're really funny. We really like yeah, this. We and we want to say... Thank you! Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're glad that you have that special rule for everyone. And let's see, Landisville, it's your t oh, Landisville signed off. So thank you, everyone, and have a nice day today as you celebrate Dr. Seuss's birthday. <laughs>